Hi, everyone. Apologies for being late right here. I had some problems with the new connection. I'm stepping in today for Andrew, who is not able to join since he's traveling. So first of all, I'm just going to copy the community meeting document to the chat so that everyone has it. Please feel free that to just um, add your attendance here into the list of attendees. So welcome everyone to the uh, Hubert community meeting um, of June 14th uh, in 2023. Um, first of all, um, there are a couple of links um, where you can join the community inside the document that link, which uh, of which the link I just posted. Um, so second of all, do we have any new members this week that would like to introduce themselves? I'm not new, but I'd like to take a moment to see if my microphone works. <laughs> hey, Sue. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I think I think I think that works. <laughs> Thank you. I can speak uh, up. My name's Chris. Oh, the mic just have spoken over. Someone. Uh, hi, my name's Chris um, with Microsoft. Uh, uh, we're using Kubert in a couple of places, so uh, thought we'd come along and maybe bring up a couple of things. Hi, Chris. Welcome. Welcome to the community. Thank you. Hi, my name is Reddy. I work with Chris. I'm from Microsoft as well. Okay. Hey. Hey. Glad to I'm not sure who is it, but someone is leaving a big noise inside the inside the Zoom, Zoom meeting somehow. Maybe you could mute yourself if you know who you are. Okay, so um yeah, first of all, uh, we have the scheduled check-in of the V1 release. Um, as a side note on that, um, release should have been happening this night or tonight, but unfortunately, which I will get, uh, get later to, the release automation did not work well. So we are currently investigating on that. So yeah, actually we should have had the first um, the, the release already, but yeah, it just didn't work. Um, <clears throat> so then let's go straight into the agenda and notes. First point is by ready. And yeah, the stage is yours. Sure. Chris, would you like to start? Yeah, I can, unless you want to. Yeah. So I, I think right. what we wanted to do is talk about a uh, what we see is a life cycle issue between Kubernetes and Kubevert. I don't know how you normally run your meetings. So given this will sort of be a little vague and a little hand wavy, do you want to push this towards the end of the call or should I just go straight into it? I would say it would be fair since you have been the first one to add something to the agenda. You can just go ahead. All right. Uh, so we have a, a situation where, uh, for uh, a variety of reasons, we have our own uh, CSI. And uh, you know, what will happen is we'll have a kubevert VM, hot plug of volume, spins up a hot plug pod, there's a PVC involved in that. It then sort of connects from the uh, hot plug pod across into the hypervisor. You've got a file descriptor link, you know, from the QEMU process. Everything's good. You hot plug a second volume. And of course, in order to hot plug the second volume, it creates a second hot plug pod. But in order to do that, it has to delete the first hot plug pod, which uh, of course makes the PVC reference in the first hot plug pod go to zero. And we get a uh, get the whole sequence of unpublished events and it basically tears down IO for the first uh, volume that was hot plugged. This from a distance looks like sort of an incompatibility between the way Kubernetes life cycles PVCs and the way that QEMU references uh, behave. I can think of a bunch of ways we can work around this, but I didn't want to get too deep into that without sort of asking, you know, what other people are doing and, and whether I maybe misunderstand the situation. 
Hi, Chris. Could I clarify one thing? Is this because um, you mentioned a, a CSI of your own nature? Is, is this a project that you're working on, or is this a hot plug? You know, that is native to Kubevert or more in the Kubevert ecosystem? So it's it's our CSI, but it's the standard Kubevert hot plug mechanism. Okay, and then I will just say the name Alex Wells, so that in case he perks up and uh, let the discussion I'm, go from there. I'm here. I'm I'm the one that implemented all this stuff. Um, so hot plug discs uh, in in keyboard is is actually sort of a hack. It's it's not really natively supported by Kubernetes at all. So that's where the whole a uh, hot plug attachment pod comes in. Essentially, we're trying to sort of work with uh, Kubernetes to, you know, do the attachment to the node and then do some uh, behind the scenes uh, craziness to make the volume visible inside the vert launcher pod and then pass it off to Kimu to to actually hot plug into the VM. Um, and in order not to have uh, you know, the original implementation actually had one pod per volume. So if you hot plug six volumes, you'd have six extra pods, which is sort of crazy. So what we did is we sort of do a, a flip-flop pod where, uh, as you, you've already taught, said all of this, where we, you know, delete the original pod and then create a new pod that references all the, um, the volumes that we have. Um, and we know in some CSI drivers that will cause a bunch of uh, unpublished uh, issues. Um, for the main ones that we use, it's not really a problem because the VM sort of keeps a lock on the volume and you know the unpublished will just error saying, hey, I can't actually unpublish this and then when the new one comes up, the error goes away, but you actually get an error because you're trying to unpublish something that, that you can't. Um, some CSI drivers will ignore that and will actually just disconnect the IO. In particular, some iSCSI uh, based ones do that. Um, I believe Alice or Vasily mentioned, yeah, Vasily mentioned that it sounds similar to uh, 9263. Uh, it sounds very similar to that one where, uh, you know, the, the unpublished happens and we're trying to fix this by uh, um, doing a slightly different order that shoots, stop the unpublished from happening. Um, so maybe you could try the PR and see if it fixes it for you. So ultimately, though, this needs to be robust to a situation where the hot plug pods go away, and even though I, this wouldn't be normal. Um, and now, sort of without getting into too much detail of how we're using it, um, this needs to be pretty solid. So you know, I'm just trying to figure out, like, so I think what you described in terms of it being a hack and and you know not really fitting that was sort of our conclusion. I was just trying to understand if there was an extra part of Kubernetes that I was unaware of, which maybe helped manage or avoid the unpublished situation. So it, it no. seems to me that the CSI requires it even to um, delete the first hot plug, hot plug pod, you need the CSI unpublished to succeed. That's correct, isn't it, Reddy? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, it's, it's re so most of this is Reddy's code, so I'm, and that's that's why I'm asking him. Um, so, you know, I. When you said that the CSIs will hold a lock on the volume, no, the, the the virtual machine will hold a lock on the volume. Yes, yeah, so it's a virtual machine. So, I mean, in what way you you mean you mean just holding the folder script or open is sufficient for certain things to just fail? Because I mean, surely they would fail. In which class, in which case, the first hot plug pod would be stuck in a um, in a terminating state because the unpublished was uh, the unpublished would then fail. Uh, so the thing is the attachment pod doesn't actually mount the volume into that pod. It just references the volume, which causes the attach to the node, uh, but we're not mounting it into that pod. So um, 
then the behind the scenes stuff will mount it into the vert launcher pod and the vert launcher will have to lock on um, on the volume. You still so get the, the first hot, sorry, but won't you still get the first hot plug pod stuck in terminating? No, because it's not mounting. It's not, it, it, it doesn't get stuck in terminating because it never actually mounted the volume into that container. We see it the other way. We see the first, first hot plug volume actually defined in the container spec of the hot plug pod. We are not using four dot four, by the way. Uh, it's a version below that. And, and we still see kubelet calling as node on publish and followed by node on stage. Yes, it will call node on. There's there's two there's two node functions, right? One is to attach it to the the node. I think that's oh, I forget the. I say attached, but it's actually a different function name in in the in the CSI. I, I forget the exact name, but there's there's two functions. One that you know essentially attaches the volume to the node, and then the second volume is the you know most CSI drivers do a bind mount to to like mount the volume into the container, um, and the second part is what we don't do for the uh, attachment part. We just do the um, attached to the node, and and that's that's how we sort of get around the, the the problem of the pod getting stuck because the pod is never actually referencing the or it's never actually mounted into the container that's in the pod. We we see a couple of issues here. If CSI throws an error, then kubelet would retry forever until the error goes away. And if it throws success, the next call followed by is controller unpublished which eventually deletes volume attachment object of Kubernetes. Maybe I can ask a slightly different question um, or phrase it differently. It seems to me that like the, the, the current way that Kubernetes works and probably for a while, it's sort of fundamentally incompatible uh, at a lower level with the way that kubert hot plug works. You know, obviously you've got it working Correct. in certain ways um, and there's probably more that can be done to make it work in, in a other variety of ways. But, you know, it is effectively an incompatibility and some extra work probably has to be done outside the normal CSI uh, Kubernetes PVC lifecycle. Correct. Okay. Correct. I, ideally, uh, Kubernetes would allow you to dynamically attach volumes to containers and it, it does not. Uh, we've tried uh to to get them to to add this functionality and and it's not really there's no real good use case for containers and they sort of rejected it so we're sort of stuck with this hack uh maybe if more people you know can because kubernetes is essentially containers right and, and we're virtual machines that are doing different things and in order to get a feature into Kubernetes, we need to give them some good container use cases for this feature. And we haven't been able to give good container uh, use cases. Yeah, I think in our particular case, you know, I can sort of think of two ways of, of approaching this. Um, the first one is to teach the CSI about these I've been calling them hidden references. Effectively, these references where, where the QEMU process holds the folder script are open. And it will defer tearing down the IO um, until those processes go away. That means having the CSI return success uh, when it actually hasn't done all the right things. And then for it to have a, an asynchronous process where we clean them up. So that situation works for the first hot plug pod going away. Second hot plug pod comes back a few you know, a couple of seconds later, that'll be fine. And if it was to move from one physical node to the next, then the QEMU process would go away and we could deal with that situation. Uh, maybe, a, and, and that might be the easiest thing for us to do in the short term. The other thing I can think of is for us to have our volume attach infrastructure be somewhat generic and separate from Kubernetes and have the Kubernetes CSI that we've got consume from that and then also teach kubert directly about how to consume from that. Have your thoughts on either of those approaches? 
so in in general, we don't like to do special things for Kubevert that Kubernetes doesn't do. Uh, and and the biggest divergence from that is obviously the hot plug, just because you know a Kubert VM is is just a process inside of a, a pod, and pods are essentially immutable. So you know CPU memory hot plug is currently not possible. A uh, network hot plug is currently not possible, and and this hot plug we had to do this crazy hack essentially to make that work. Uh, it, it's a, it's a problem, and uh, we've made progress with CPU and memory, uh, and, and I think networking is is getting there too, and and we've sort of mostly got disk working, but there's definitely certain CSI drivers that don't like it at all, just because we're doing some crazy stuff. So oh, apparently networking is already working. So, um, but yes, we're doing, we're doing crazy stuff that we really shouldn't be doing, but we had no other options. So. Alexander, um... <sighs> This is a little different than I so the uh when you're attaching a second disk, the new pod, the first pod gets deleted, and then the second one is created. I thought the second one was created first and then the other one was deleted. No, currently the first one is deleted and then the second one is created. Well, what if we create the second one first and then that gets mounted? Then that could potentially keep the um unless it's the read write and if the pvc is not read write once pod you should be able to um start the other pod in the same node and kubelet won't mount it again uh and then when the other pod gets deleted it shouldn't send the unmount um false we, we could also just keep the pods around so we could also just never delete a pod the old pods, you know, I know that seems a little inelegant because pods are accumulating, but they're relatively light and inexpensive. Right, um, but they're they're consuming network IP addresses, so you'll you'll run yeah, out of IP addresses real quick. I mean, in, in our situation, that would be that would be fine. Um, you know, and and of course, if you were to, in our case, we might be adding tens of volumes. You would only have to create a new pod with all the outstanding volumes. So if you were to hot plug one and then wait a few seconds and hot plug another nine relatively quickly, maybe only end up with two or three pods in that case. And that, that would be fine. But I mean, ultimately that still probably comes up short because we have a situation where this needs to work. Even if I delete the, uh, this needs to work reliably, even if I delete the hot plug pods. So if I was to cordon drain on the way down, it needs to sort of sequence things somewhat correctly. If for some reason those pods were to be deleted for, you know, e even though it probably shouldn't happen. We still don't want the IO, the unpublished happening and, and tearing the IO out underneath the workloads. Right. And it there's there's nothing you can do to prevent the pod from being evicted. Right. There's you can't guarantee the pod will stay around. So right, but we but we can modify the CSI to not to uh, to not tear the IO away while there's a reference. Right. Um and and we we've seen that with uh, some iSCSI CSI drivers and the the PR uh, referenced uh, changes the way we handle it slightly different that seems to fix it for the known CSI drivers that broke so it might work for you too um, I'm not one hundred percent sure which which PR was that I think you quoted the number earlier I didn't. Uh, let's see, the PR that fixes this is 9269. Okay, we'll look at that. And, and that plays around with uh, what we do. Uh, is this a, a, a block volume or a file system volume? These are block, vo well, these are block volumes, but I mean, I imagine it would happen in either case. Right, so this particular PR changes the way the block volumes are handled slightly that might actually prevent the tie down from happening. So, Do you know which release this was in? Is, is it I don't think the fix is merged yet. 
to be on. Let me double check. Did, sorry, did, did I read the number? It looks like 9269. Is that what you Yeah, it is merged. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, it says it's merged. Uh, I so I, I don't think it's been released yet then. Uh, let's see. When was it? Three weeks. It was merged three weeks ago. So it's probably not released yet. So actually, I know it's not released yet. So. Okay. Look, but you can definitely just build build main and, and see if that fixes the problem for you. So. Yeah, I, I could I could um, I could pull this out into our repo and test it that way as well. We'll, we'll try that. I went through it earlier. Uh, from what I understand, it tries to uh, have all the volumes mounted into the container, not just the one that was uh, uh, that was just attached. So by the time the second hot plug pod came in, we already have IOSS because the first one gone. Yes, yeah, as soon as the first hot plug pod goes away, it's, it's relatively quick um, between the pod terminating. And well, I guess the actual, the CSI unpublish actually occurs before the pod is actually technically terminated. I think it's, it's sort of in a terminate pending state, the kublet, invokes the CSI, everything cleans up and then the termination proceeds. So by the time the first pod is terminated, you know, we've torn down the IO through the unpublished mechanism. It sounds to me like at this point, we like, you know, we probably just need to teach the CSI uh, how to be aware of references, you know, outside of the normal Kubernetes lifecycle. That's not particularly difficult. We know which sorts of processes to look for on the system. And then I'm maybe sorry. beyond that. Yeah. Yeah, but am I missing something? So what if we if we change, if we create the second pod that contains a reference to like both PVCs first? And then well, it won't come up. You you because if it's a read write once PVC, the second pod will get stuck. It, it will not get started. Um, the read write once is yes. on the node level, not the. Well, you still get uh, publish. Will publish will you won't get publish called? I think on the second pod um, until the PVC reference goes to zero on the first pod. You, you should be so, able to start no. two PVCs with a read write once if they're on the same node, or two pods that, that reference the same read write once volume on the same node should start. Yeah, there's only there's a new read write once pod mode that will make that not possible. But rewrite once, you can have two pods in the same node have mount the same PVC. OK, so so the, the thought then is if we create the second pod first and it holds all references to all PVCs, then the unpublished will not be uh, in both. So we could change the flip-flop mechanism to always create a hot a new, the new hot plug pod with a full complement of volumes before we delete the old one. Correct. And that should work for read write once. It won't I work for it, read write once pod. Uh, so we, I think that we could live with that. We also need to make read write many work at some point. I have to think that that has a problem there. I think for rewrite many, it's even easier because then, then there'd be fewer restrictions around it. So, it, you know, again, it would have that situation where we need that pod around um, or else the IO breaks, but I probably live with that for a little bit. Yeah, I think, I mean, this is something that I feel like we could easily prototype. I think just if we make the second one first, and I thought that was what we were always doing. Um, no, because there's, there's some CSI drivers that don't actually respect the read write ones on the node with multiple pods. So that's why we uh, went with delete first and then create instead of create and then delete. Yeah, well, that, that's, yeah, I mean. We're, we're, like I said, we're doing a, a hack here. So we're always going to run into some CSI drivers that don't like the, the order. Yeah, the, I mean, yeah, we're we should, doing. yeah, we should think about, you know, the that's why in, in general, first. it would be better if Kubernetes actually supported adding uh, volumes dynamically to pods. Right, but I, I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon, if no, ever. So the, the you know, even if we start the process now, it'll probably take a year or two before that even you know, becomes anywhere anything. So right, but I but I I do like the idea of you know if we can um, 
I, I think the other change that would be needed is, you know, Randy can correct me here. I, anecdotally, when we look at the new pods coming in, it only has the new volumes, not the ones that are already attached. So we would actually need to also make sure that the hot plug pods have a full complement of all volumes at all time. It, it should have the yeah. new, new attachment pod should have all the volumes that are hot plugged at that point in time. Okay, I'll have to look at that. I maybe I misread that. That actually, you know, I'll I'll mention one other thing I've noticed, uh, just slightly related, but not exactly to this. When um, the hot plug pod dies, there's some sort of notification event that triggers sync VMI, at which point it walks through the hypervisor and it re hot plugs all the existing volumes. That glitches IO. That causes the IO to EIO for a fraction of a second. So I was going to go through and event uh, prevent it from doing that, but I, I, you know, I wasn't sure if there was a um, a better way. Yeah, an ish, a GitHub issue or something like that, I think would be great. Um, yeah, we can do that. But um, yeah, I think it may be worth prototyping to see if we can create that second pod, yeah, with the full complement of all the disks. When, when that's running, then you can kill the previous one. And you did it, and the code used to work like that at some point. We, we could dig through the Git history and maybe figure out where that was happening. I thought it worked like that, but I, I may have been. I, I, I doubt that it ever worked like that, but it, that's how it worked in my head. Okay. <laughs> I didn't implement the feature Alexander did. No, it, it never worked like that. The original version would create a new pod for every volume. But as I said, you know, if you hot plug 10 volumes, then you have 10 pods and you eat 10 IP addresses. So we, we, we decided to go with a, with a, hot, with a flip flop type mechanism where we create a new pod that has all the volumes that are currently hot plugged and then, uh, or actually we delete the pod first and then create the new one um, because we, we saw a seaside driver not respecting the read write ones on the node for uh, multiple pods. Alex, okay. any reason why why some volumes are mounted into the container but not all? Because we have been seeing at least one inside the container mounts, but rest all are just referenced under volumes. Okay, I didn't quite understand the question. So, if if I have four volumes hot plugged, I see one mounted inside the container. That's all just referenced in the hot plug pod. I'm trying to understand why one is mounted inside the container, but not all. So you're, you're trying to figure out how it gets mounted in the vert launcher container? No. Why a hot plug pod is referenced in the container mounts, volume devices, but not all hot plug pods, hot plug volumes, I mean. We only see some volumes referenced. In the container modes. Which container? Hot plug pod container. Because we're not always doing the mount, the, the, the attachment pod is purely to get Kubernetes to attach the volume to the node, but not mount the, the volume in the hot plug container. And, um, For, uh, I, I have to look at that PR because that PR actually is, is essentially what it's doing is, is changing the way that works. Uh, for, I want to say file systems, we decided not to do the mount and for block we did and that was causing a problem. So now we're changing it to not do the mount at all for all of them. I, I think that's the, the gist of the of the PR of the fix. Um, you know but, how robust that is going forward? Like I can imagine, um, given that you have volumes in the pod, but not mounted in the containers, it might be possible a future version of Kubernetes decides to, you know, clean those out since they're not referenced. Is there a guarantee that that won't happen? Mm. I don't think there's a guarantee, but I think that Kubernetes maintainers are pretty, um, usually pretty good about maintaining behavior 
from the past. No, they, they are, but I mean, they've, they've certainly changed things before, and this would be one of those things that could go on for months before anyone noticed. It'd be very few people, I would think, creating a, a volume yeah. reference at the pod level, but not at the container level, and, and then expecting something to happen, because you would have, other than you know situations like this, you'd have no way of actually knowing what's going on from a normal container workload. So if they were to change that for one reason, deliberately or otherwise, I doubt anyone would. I, I don't think so. I, I would be very surprised. Um, because, yeah, I, I would just be very because, you know, the your pod spec, the volume section maps to like certain CSI calls and then it wouldn't be making those calls anymore. I would just be surprised if that changed. I, it, it, of course, it's totally possible, but I would be very surprised. Okay. You, you could make two references to the same volume as well. So we're, we're just happen to make zero references. So. Okay, so I, I think we've got maybe got three options right now. Maybe the most promising of which is to, at least in our case, create the new hot plug uh, pod with a full complement of everything um, before we delete the old one. I, you mentioned that that's a problem for some people, maybe us, I don't know, we haven't tried it yet. Uh, certainly we could make that a, an environment variable or something to change that behavior maybe. We, we've discussed doing that, uh, making it a, a flag or, or something um, to accommodate different CSI drivers. Mm -hmm. And changing the order in, in which we do this is, you know, not super difficult, so. So I don't want to step too hard on the break here, but I think maybe at least we have a path forward regarding the PR fixing this behavior that was mentioned by Alex. And um, I would want to give the other people from the audience um, also a little bit of time. So, um, would you would you be able to to close this up outside the meeting, or do you still want to continue? I'm just asking. I, I think we're we've this has run its course for now. We can continue this offline, and I appreciate everyone's time. Yep. Thanks so much. You, you, you can find me on Slack if, if you have any other questions or anything like that. And also, by the way, I'm not exactly sure uh, if that is. Uh, uh, if that is maintained because I never uh, visit that one. There is a dedicated Qubit 6 storage meeting, which is uh, on our Qubit community calendar. Um, Alex, I guess, I guess this is, is this still alive or uh, is, is yes. that a thing? It's, uh, every, every other Monday. Yeah, it has, it has a, a, a lower cadence than the weekly community meeting. So it's uh, every two weeks, I think, right? So, um, at least, um, yeah, that, that that could also be something where, where you could probably maybe continue on, on discussing this somehow. I'm not sure if that, if that worked for you, so at least. Um, okay, so um, to go to the next agenda point, um, this is uh, from Edward Haas. Um, it's network binding as plugin. Um, yeah, Eddie, do you want to go next? Hi, yes, it's, I just wanted to raise awareness. Uh, uh, there were some activity or some requests on on existing issues that were open and uh, people requesting all kind of uh, networking tweaks. So we said that we will we will uh, push for this uh, pluggable binding networking option. So this is a starting point. So if you want to start looking at it, it would be great. I will try to set up a meeting next week and. And from there, every week, uh, we'll have sync points to see how it goes. And if anyone has uh, ideas of how to do it better, then please add comments to the document or start a discussion on Slack or send me emails, whatever fits you best. That's it, thanks. Okay, thanks everyone for bringing this up. So next point is by me. Um, <clears throat> there was an attempt yesterday to uh, kick off the uh, release automation, which uh, failed on the release job. So um, I created an issue on this. Uh, we are still currently in, in uh, 
investigating this one. It looks like there is something wrong with the container manifest that have, that are being pushed. So if anyone is more familiar with that part of the build of the Qubit build, we really appreciate your help. So um, yeah, that's it for me. So, and also um, in uh, to take, uh, to replace or to, to uh, in case for Andrew Burden, he just wanted to mention us that there are a couple of days to apply for KubeCon China and KubeCon North America. The call for paper will close on June 18th. So that's four days, which you have still, if you want to put something in there. So go ahead, please, if you, if you are interested. Um, also, those of you who might be interested in the SFS con, which is happening to, um, to be, um, to be um, starting in November 10th and 11th, which is the weekend, I think Friday is Saturday. Uh, this is in Bolzano, Italy. Um, the call for papers will close on June 30th. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's it for that. And next one will be Itamar Holder uh, with the application policy for Cupid. Please go ahead, Itamar. Yeah, hello. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Thanks. Great. So just wanted to raise attention for this PR. Um, it was uh, a bit abandoned for a while because of uh, various reasons, but now um, I'm back working on it. I think it's a very important subject, and I think it's very important that a lot of representatives from this repo will take part in it because, um, yeah, it would affect us all. So um, please, if you want to have a look, if you want to give a review, it would be very appreciated. And that's it. Thank you. Thanks, Edmar. Um, so I forgot something. I just I'm just going to sneak that in right away. Um, so I've been creating a PR in case it, uh, so so to be helpful for um, uh, adding some documentation on uh, where Prow, for example, stores its artifacts, which might be interesting for people debugging the Qubit itself. Um, and I would really appreciate people proofreading this, whether that makes sense or whether that is helpful. Um, so in case if you, uh, if you just um, happen to, to um, be wanting to look at some Qubit logs, for example, or vert, um, 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 vert operator logs or whatever, what you need, then please take a look at this PR. This tries to, to clear up on where those artifacts, um, artifacts are actually stored inside the prow. Um, so that's all for our agenda and notes. And there is uh, that, that will be now um, time for the open floor. Um, so anyone who has a topic he wants to discuss, he or she wants to discuss, they want to discuss, please go ahead now. Who is coming to DEFCON? Yeah, and have fun there, right? I think okay. we have a room. I, I think we have so, a room. Sorry, there. Go ahead. So I'm saying that I think the last time they mentioned that if someone is coming to DEFCON, there is a special room there that uh, they will run a workshop. So if anyone is around, they can come and say hello. Great. So I just added that to the um, to your control notes. And so I hope that that makes sense. Um, OK, so then next one will be whether we want to discuss a couple of pull requests. Um, does anyone uh, need some help on that? Or does anyone point something out? or? Should we probably go over the list somehow and, and take a look at this? Okay, I'm going to try to share my screen real quick. I hope everyone can see the, this now. These are the pull requests for 
recent ones. Okay, this one is by me. Um, we don't need to discuss that. This one is also by me, sorry for that. So I'm keeping the tuple points I should pull up, right? Okay. So this one looks pretty fresh. We guess that this is not yet needed to discuss. Let's, let's wait for things. This is the quarantine flicky, it's the temperature test. Okay, that one looks like backport. Well, that one has already been commented on by Brian, if I understand correctly. So, and it's all, also LGTM, LGTM approved, LGTM approved. Yeah, this, this one is also LGTM. I don't see any. Thing that would be already needed to look at giving attention. So network setup, probably that one. That has been opened up yesterday. Okay, so we don't have any activity. Eddie, do you, are you aware of this one? Do you know whether anyone from from the network group is somehow handling this one? Yeah, someone from the network group actually opened it. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just asking whether anyone is, uh, is um, also looking at it. Um, I guess so. Okay. So yeah, so let's let's leave it for a while, and and then uh, let's try to uh, let's try to to uh, look at it the next time if it still doesn't get any attention. But I guess not. Yeah, you're right. So let's see. So also yesterday the second as it improved. Uh, app armor support and word launcher. Interesting. Uh, people have already been looking at that one, so that should be okay. This one, uh, for example, I, uh, what I don't understand about it is uh, how it is tested. I mean, this is this part, so I'm clueless. You are talking about this one that I'm showing right yes. away? So this, for example. Was, okay. Yeah. I think we don't have, uh, like, we are not, we don't know if this works. Because we don't have the test environment that actually simulates or that, that actually gives um, gives it gives it somehow a room for uh, testing it on, on, yeah. on a real environment, right? Yeah, so it's That's like, uh, let's say you add it add this now and someone, some, for some reason it breaks, no one will know about it. Yeah, that's, that's a good, that's a good point, but I think from the community perspective, we could just say we would need some um, someone who would provide a test environment if he wants to invest in that, right? So um, I think if um, if people from the community are really interested into that and would want to invest their time into that and also some money, they could provide a testing environment for, for uh, just actually checking that. So at, I don't see at the moment that we can somehow um create an environment where this would be testable somehow oh yeah i think they can you can create an environment i mean someone can create an environment the one who posted this i guess so in kubrick ci they can uh, create another lane there maybe or and then ask them to run to help provide resources to run them maybe something like that but i'm not sure anyway the, the other option is to to do this somehow externally and not internally. Yeah, like uh, provide means for someone from outside to to add these changes without touching the base code. Hmm. I don't know if that's possible, like maybe environment variables or stuff like that. Hmm. Okay. 
So yeah, I'll leave it at that. At that. If, if you want to chime in on that, uh, please feel free to do that on PR somehow. So I think these are valid concerns that, that you have. So, so they might be valuable to, to add just to the PR. So feel free to do that somehow. Um, okay. So next one is also by me. This is also by Julian Edward. I guess it's not. So okay, this one. Also good, I could say that is edited and approved. Last week, quick workers. Okay, that would probably this is still work in progress. Okay, so I'll leave it at that. This is also edited and this one says that also has comments. That's already two weeks ago, so I guess that we that we're already beyond the mark of two weeks that we want to look at. Okay, so then let's try. Let's let me take a quick look at whether we want to come. take a quick look at the mailing list. If there is something that needs attention. Okay, that's also looks like there's activity here. This is your post where you are uh, writing to the Qubit Dev, right, Eddie? Okay. I guess I take that as a yes somehow. And this is dogs, maybe team, maintain business meeting, a large discussion. These are the meeting notes first. We want next steps. One request will postpone that is also so I don't see anything that has been has not been somehow discussed. Okay, um, then let's take a quick round of box scrub. By the way, everyone can see my screen, right? Not that I'm talking about yes. things that you don't can, you can see. Okay, thank you. Okay, this is one one hour old. I guess that this is something that Lee has himself. Oh, and this is one is by me. So good version discovery. Nine hours. Okay, we have a couple of things going on here. Well, I think that has been fixed somehow, right? That's their group version discovery. Is Lugo possibly here? I think this their group version discovery has, has been fixed in a recent version. So I'm surprised to find this. Yeah, maybe it could be that because it's the alpha zero version, which um, doesn't contain the fix, I think. I'm just going to add. Oh, what's it again? Let's see, that's one.
And image upload turns out. Version. Oh, that looks. Really okay from the information perspective. Folks from storage, do we need anything else here in the description? I see something like the CDI version, some cube cuddle get PV, and some additional context regarding the logs. Is that sufficient or would you want to check whether that there is still something missing and, and continue that? So I'm at least assigning a wells and probably yeah tag Michael too. Okay, sure. I'm not exactly sure. I would probably at least add the needs information because I'm not sure if it has all. But yeah, so you can remove it if you if you want then and make it accepted somehow so this goes forward okay so let me see this is by lee and this is also by lee but if they approved and you're scheduling for the cpu arch environment okay interesting Oh, hybrid CPU arch environment. It's interesting. This sounds to me like he's trying to use, or they are trying trying to use a feature that is not yet present. Or am I um, unaware of that? We already su support hybrid CPU architecture clusters. Install multi edge cube root. Okay. I was aware of, at least I thought that we still don't support that, but yeah, I might be wrong. Okay, so let me see. Let's warm up to this. Okay, PCI devices. Who would be able to chime in here regarding GPUs? Uh, anyway, I think at least there might be a little bit more information required.
Jed, would you be able to take a look at this one? Um, yeah, I'll have a quick look. And maybe I'll need some help from Vladik too. Should I, should I directly ping Vladik or do you want to do that yourself? Yeah, just add Vladik. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, so let's see. Oh, that's interesting. Something with Windows VMs. Mm -hmm. Can you take us here regarding the Windows VM? Okay, so I don't leave it at that. I think we are nearly at the top of the hour, so I would probably close out now. Um, anyone, anything to share that the community needs to know? Uh, some James last words or something like that? Okay, then. Thanks, everyone, for your attendance. Um, have a nice rest of your day, wherever you are, and have a great week and see you next week in the next community meeting. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.